I want to pass the microphone off to um, our CTO uh, at Thornton Thomas Eddy, Rob Batani. He heads up Core Studio. He's kind of the, uh, the guy that pushes our buttons to keep us pushing other buttons, um, if you want to put it uh, that way. Um, so Rob, stage is yours. Cool, thanks, Charlie. So I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up hopefully quickly. Um, amazing presentations. Um, it's always funny with these presentations, there tends to be a, a, a kind of theme and we don't even attempt that. So anyway, I'm going to um, share my screen. Uh, are you, which screen are you seeing, by the way? Uh, actually, uh, PowerPoint. Great, Home I think screen. I may have to re-share. What about now? No, right? Nope. All right, I'm gonna, I, I got it. All right, once we get past this, it'll be good. Okay, what about now? Good? Uh, yes. Cool, all right. So um, I'm gonna be sort of wrapping this up uh, with a few final thoughts and then talk a little bit about um, some of the things that we're working on uh, really briefly, um, which I think uh, sort of dovetails pretty nicely into what the talks that we've uh, seen today so far. So um, first of all, huge thanks to this organizational committee and in honor of the UK event, I changed my spelling to organization to the UK version. And uh, within TT, we had Lucy, JC, Dave, Ben, Charlie, and your own. Um, you know, hundreds of texts and hundreds of emails. Um, Andy and Yorgos at Grimshaw, Andrew at KPF, and Paul at Simply Rhino. Um, you know, this was, this organization started in March of this year, um, really to um, sort of redo what didn't happen last year at Shape to Fabrication Conference, uh, which was obviously canceled due to, to the pandemic. So I think this was a really good uh, sort of uh, redo of that, um, and probably more, to be honest. Um, so, as well as the workshop presenters, we had 125 plus attendees, um, a lot of students, um, which is great. Um, Grimshaw, uh, KPF, MKSD Tech, which I've never seen before. I took their workshop, it was great. Um, the Shape Diver folks, along with uh, Emil and Sergey, who have been helping them out. And obviously the Core Studio, Dave and Han Shen. Um, really great presentations from what I've seen, ones that I did attend and I heard stories about the others. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the, the videos of them. We will be releasing videos of these workshops once we get a little bit them cleaned up and uh, processed. And then we had some really interesting tech talks um, by again, the Beam MKS folks, uh, Unity, the Speckle folks and Aliverse. And of course, you guys saw some of these amazing hack, hacks, which um, never ceases to amaze in terms of, um, you know, sort of the, the crazy ideas that come out and actually what's accomplished. And this is, you know, sort of that, um, the whole idea, I think, of this whole conference, actually, AC Tech, is to sort of, um, uh, you know, take your typical sphere of influencers and expand it exponentially. And I think the fact that you can meet people from different cultures, from different technical skills, from different countries, all but within the same interests of pushing the envelope of technology, I think is, is pretty amazing. Um, and of course, the uh, jurors that, you know, sort of um, stepped in and took their weekend to, um, to listen to these ideas. Um, and of course, the presenters, Andy, Yorgos, uh, Matthew, Yaron, wrapping that up, uh, Nicholas, Luke, and Kobus, Scott and Luis, and Aloy and Victoria. A little backstory about that, that complex project that we can't mention is, is that uh, that project actually came through a connection from a hackathon, believe it or not, that we did. So someone from the hackathon contacted me, says, we got a really complex project that we need your help on. I passed that on to our core modeling folks and our, our, our facades team and they ran with it. So it's been pretty amazing. Um, so a little bit of what we're working on, just to mention, 
um, really briefly. And I didn't make this word up, by the way. Um, I made sure of that. Um, datafication of design, which is kind of what you guys have heard about uh, a lot today. And I'm just going to show this project and be a little meta. My background is actually this project um, today. But um, so a lot goes on from a design party, of, in this case, the Tata Innovation Center in New York City, to how that design gets resolved. And it's essentially data. Um, and, you know, down to our model uh, to the build project. And all we're really doing is passing and iterating data between the various parties to sort of take those questions that start at this phase, the early phase of the project, and answer those questions, um, which then inform the next phase of the process, let's just say. So, um, you know, all projects starts with usually just an idea and a couple of documents, a schema, I mean, a pro forma maybe, and a couple of, uh, you know, uh, design ideas. But this is the typical process, right? The computation part, the visualization and the coordination part, documentation, QA, QC, to make sure our designs are correct, and the delivery of that. And what we're seeing, and you kind of saw the shape diver folks today, um, uh, which is the, the computation part, the apps part. I'm going to talk a little bit about Cortex, which is our machine learning app that we've been working on. And then Trace, which is sort of uh, wraps this up and, um, well, I'll talk about it. So the first one is, is this is early um, in the process, but uh, you know we've been working on AI machine learning apps since 2015. And it took a long, long time to get a real sort of usable app out there um, from inception to app. And what we realized is that there needs to be a simpler, faster way of getting an ML model to your desktop um, or to the web, or whatever it may be. So we've created Cortex. Uh, Sergey Pigash is working very hard on this as well as many others. Um, basically it does, it's sort of a, uh, uh, a platform that stores data sets, training models, and their various schemas, um, as well as the train models. And it gives us a way to create a simple API um, so that other programs can access those models or variations of it um, in the app. So what we see is sort of the next level of machine learning apps being almost like a, uh, a gross uh, a laundry list, essentially, of apps that inform a certain uh, of the larger apps. So let's call it micro apps. And um, you know, this is a hacky visualization of process. Um, but in the AEC world, where we have usually a minimal amount of inputs, it could be a massing model, it can be, uh, you know, some sketches or something, that usually gets sort of parsed to the various disciplines, call this one engineer, one engineer, two architect, etc. And then we process that information into outputs. In our industry, though, what makes this difficult is that those outputs then become, go back, feedback into the inputs. Um, and this this iteration and sort of circulation or design goes back and forth uh, uh, sort of until we resolve all of those um, and everyone's on the same page. Um, and the tricky part is that if you don't have this, whether it's an AML model or it's just a, an app, um, you get a latency um, in those outputs and therefore it screws up the inputs for others, for, for instance, uh, which is why we have sort of a, those eight-year projects, as Charlie mentioned, those probably could be done in two years or whatever. So this is where Cortex comes into play. Uh, we feel, you know, in the future, and we don't even have that many ML apps, ML models, um, but we're getting close to having ways of creating the ML models really, really quickly and deploying them, and it's a Cortex comes into play. So we've gotten this far where we actually can take our sort of Python models, uh, run various algorithms, store them in this location. This could be, you know, if you're doing ML, anyone's familiar with ML, you're going to have multiple models, test models that uh, are, some are good, some are bad, some have different schemes, et cetera. And then it's going to have the schema sort of exposed to the end user um, so that they can pick and choose that specific ML model and then have a quick deployment of that ML model to their various apps. 
And we see having multiple hundreds, potentially thousands of models here um, to be deployed on a very specific, pro on a specific project or, or process. So that's Cortex very early in the, in the phase, but we're hoping to have, hopefully by October, we'll have something up and running in alpha version. Um, the other one is Trace, and this is something that is really exciting to me. Um, I call it the PDF drawing killer. Um, Dave Manns has been working on this for a while. And, and so why am I saying we need a new drawing? Um, we have these antiquated workflows, that is creating PDF black and white representational uh, drawings with various line thicknesses and annotations. Um, but we have models that have all that information in there. Uh, and what happens is, is that you end up having a, a um, uh, sort of the outcome is worse than if we just had the old way of doing things. Um, you know, the kind of way I first learned, which was like just, you know, sketching on a, um, drawing lines on, on, a, on, a, on a mylar. Um, and why we need to do this? Because they don't actually exist anymore. Their drawings are digital representations of paper. I would guarantee the last year people have not printed out a single set of drawings. Um, the other thing is, is that I would say, and some people can finish say more, 10 to 30% of a designer's time is spent making drawings that look good, uh, i.e. the old way, all while the information is actually already in the model. Just click on it. Um, PDF drawing, I would argue, I'm, again, I'm old school, but um, I actually enjoy reading drawings uh, through paper because I can have, you know, one finger in the uh, plan drawings, one section in the details, and one section in the typical details. And I can flip back and forth very quickly, um, you know, to sort of understand the project, as well as having a, a couple of fingers in the architectural drawings. Um, you can't do that anymore. So you, in a PDF to do it, you're scrolling up and down and it takes forever to read a set of drawings. Um, it's actually much, much worse than the old school way. Um, the other aspect is drawings used to be used for four functions, coordination, permit submission, QAQC, and contract documents, all thrown into that, that same set of 2D documents, which is a waste of time, in my opinion. Um, so coordination happens in Revit or in 360 or some central platform. So that function is dead. So you can kill that one. Permit drawings can be much simpler issuances. Um, building departments don't care about whether if, uh, a piece of furniture is this material, that material, they just want to know whether it's code compliant. So let's create code compliance drawings, if you will, or documents, as to say. Drawings um, don't show any analytical information unless we tag it using, you know, annotation. Um, and so I'm going to show how that can be significantly better using something like Trace. And lastly, um, you know, the most important aspect to a fabricator is all that embedded information, which they either have to interpret or find in some table or find in a series of specs, specifications that at least some are outside of the drawing. Um, the best way is to embed that in one place and, uh, or in the model. So what Trace does, takes all that Revit geometry, puts it into uh, the right, we've actually made uh, Dave's painstakingly made all of the graphics look correct as like in the 2D drawing, but all the information is fully connected. Um, and so this is a quick example of a structural model that I made up. Notice I didn't put any annotation other than B marks. Why? Because the information is fully connected into those, into those, into that information. Um, this is a web, web platform. Um, all of the layers of that model are exposed. You can turn things off on and off. And so what I see, this is a way to distribute that information sort of in between fully digitized and it's kind of old school um, way of doing it, but significantly better. So why not use color in drawings? Um, so this is color coding by beam mark. This is color coding by beam shear. Um, significantly better than a 2D drawing in black and white. Um, there are things that you can do with analytical information that you just can't not do in uh, PDFs, period. For instance, I'm identifying the lateral system of this little makeup building. You cannot do that in 2D drawings. So this is an architectural version. This is a project by Bjarke Engels, which I was the engineer record. This is like a DD set of drawings that I pulled from the, uh, uh, from the model. 
Similar thing though, um, all the information is fully sort of connected. Um, and I see this as a bridge for digitized data delivery and sort of having that sort of representational information um, on sort of so-called plans. Again, significantly better in terms of QAQC than traditional uh, uh, black and white documents. So where we see this going, um, what I'd really love to do is to have uh, hyperlinks that show up on the, on the platform itself of sections and details, um, three-dimensional, uh, go to 3D model, for instance, uh, overlay 3D, you know, the, art, the architect plus the structure, um, or to, to the, the MEP. I think it's really stupid that drawings are separated into disciplines. Um, you know, that if I'm coordinating, you know, the structure with the architecture, I need to open up a whole other set of architectural drawings to sort of coordinate that. Why, how, why don't we just overlay that in a single model? So I'm really excited about this. Um, we're still early. Um, we're, we've learned over the years not to go too far with too many features. So we're sort of slowly bolting things on um, to get this into a robust platform. So thanks, everyone. Um, this has been a really nice AAC tech, um, you know, as best as we could virtual. And I think, um, you know, in the next AAC tech uh, starting pretty soon in October, which we'll probably start coordinating this week, um, is it's going to be a hybrid version, um, at least for, you know, U.S. folks or people that can make their trip over to U.S. Uh, to New York City. And um, it'll probably be harder doing the hybrid version, but, you know, that's, that's what we're here for. And then shape to fabrication, look out for that. Um, we hopefully will can do that again in 2022, where we do that in person in the UK. Um, and then for you know information, just check out uh, ac, ac to follow the uh, latest news.